Hello everyone and welcome back to Carvinas 14. Today we are going to be doing another Genshin Impact video and obviously it's another Genshin Impact video on our favourite waifu, Shen He. Undoubtedly the best looking character in the game as a playable character right now. So um, yeah, I just love her design. I love everything about her. But today, we're not going to be doing any tests today. We're not going to be doing any build guides on her or anything. In fact, I'm going to be talking about how I crafted the best possible team for physical DPS Shen He. That's right. I believe I, if you guys know me, ever since the very first few Shen He videos I actually started making. In fact, I think actually the very first one, if you go back, I I think I've been using this exact same team even back then. This is probably the I think this is actually the only team I've been running for Shen He. I've been trying to figure out what the best team for Shen He was a long time. In fact, I still am currently trying to think of any ways to make Shen He's team even better. But it's 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 dawned to me a, a many few times that maybe this is the best I can actually do right now. With the current units in the actual game and even in the roster that I have, I feel as though this is probably the best team I can actually craft for Shen He. And you might be thinking, well, who do you have on your team? We have Shen He as the DPS. We have Lisa, which is... Kind of meh, but why would you put you, her in your team, you know what I mean? Zhongli, because, uh, well, massive shield means undying. And then Yunjin to boost your normal attacks. Now, Lisa, you might, you guys might be thinking, why? well, Lisa's probably there for the uh, superconduct. You can easily replace her. And, well, here's the thing. Lisa is providing me many different buffs. And I'm about to show you guys how and why. Now, I will have to say that my Lisa build is a little bit different. It's a little bit odd. It's very, very probably triggering for the community that mains Lisa. Uh, God bless and Godspeed to all you heroes out there. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. So today, we're going to be taking a look at how I think that I've crafted probably the most perfect team for Shen He that I can think of. Now, if you guys know me, I have level 90 out of 90 Shen He with about 54% crit rate and 246.7 crit damage. Obviously, I'm a lot more crit damage heavy than crit rate heavy, but if you guys know me, I always say 200... What is it? Sorry, 50% uh, crit rate is all you need for the open world. If you're not a Spiral Abyss player like I am, you don't need any more crit rate compared to 50%. You don't need to go higher than 50%. Honestly, if you get around 50%, perfect. That's like the minimum you should have. Go Going more than that is honestly pretty, it's it's much better, but if you can sacrifice a little bit of crit rate for more crit damage, go ahead. As long as you don't go uh, below 50%, you're completely fine. So that's why I've stuck with these ratios. 54% crit rate with about 246.7% crit damage. Um, yeah, and uh, my energy recharge isn't obvious, is obviously isn't amazing, it's not pretty good either, but... Um, it is what it is. Uh, physical. I've never really had any problems with energy for Shen He. The reason being is because Shen He just creates so many energy particles with her actual um, elemental skills anyway. And if you guys uh, do know me, and you've actually you might have noticed this in the actual tests, but I actually have C1 Shen He. I was lucky enough to pull her twice actually. So uh, yeah, I actually have C1 Shen He instead of C0 Shen He. So that's why I I actually have very very good energy particle generation with Shen He and. And I have 108.3% physical damage bonus. So you guys probably know what set I'm running. I have the um, set Staff of Homer, which is probably the most broken weapon in the game right now because of its actual stats. Um, the only thing, the only way I can make Shen He personally stronger, in my opinion, is if I get better substats through artifacts and stuff, even though my artifact stats are actually pretty good, decent already. Um, well, the helmet could do a little bit of work, but that's not really an emergent. It's not really a bad uh, helmet in my opinion i don't think it's a horrendous uh one if it rolled into crit rate like maybe once more it would have been better but it's at 10 percent. it gives me a 10 percent crit rate substat so honestly that's not too bad and the feather if it it has a one-to-one -one crit rate to crit damage ratio if it was like a one to maybe a two rolls into crit damage or three rolls it would have been even better but um yeah Anyway, uh, another thing I think that can make Shen He even stronger is if a polearm comes out with, like, a crit damage substat of 88.2%. Because, um, 
because there's a because the aqua simulacra gives you 88.2 percent and the red horns the red horn the red thorn stone thresher if if i'm getting the name correct that comes with uh you know 88.2 percent crit damage and yes i am sacrificing base attack for that but at the end of the day this build never really evolved through base attack it revolved through crit damage a lot of it so yeah that'd be a pretty major upgrade for shen he um the artifacts i'm basically running near perfect artifacts uh, the flower is absolutely on. I think, honestly, the flower is probably... Is, is a really good flower. Um, shame it rolled into defense once, but you know what? It is what it is. The feather... This is the feather I was talking about. So it's it's a one-to-one -one ratio near enough, basically. But if it rolled once more into crit damage, that would have been even better. Um, the attack percent timepiece, honestly, this is probably the best timepiece that I can actually ask for, obviously, the, compared to this one. Uh, and before, I was running this one over here, but obviously, I, I changed to two-piece physical damage bonus and the this physical damage bonus set is giving me a lot more damage now it's it's giving me a lot more damage like numbers that i didn't actually even think were possible i like i'm comfortably hitting around 10k average with this build so uh, yeah before i was hitting around 7k average but now it's 10k average maybe even an 11k so it's pretty good this goblet is probably one of the best pieces i ever have um along with the feather and the actual timepiece and this helmet is the one i was talking about so 9.7 percent crit rate basically 10 percent crit rate so it's not a horrendous feather but it definitely could be better as well but what i'm trying to say is that i feel as though shen my shen her probably could possibly couldn't get that much stronger if you know what i mean like Farming for all those substat rolls to get the perfect artifact, and it will only boost my overall crit damage by, like, a small percent. At the end of the day, it, it's obviously something that I would do for Shen he, anything for Shen he, but, you know, it's not really feasible and it's not very efficient. So this is probably the best I can actually do in terms of artifacts for her. Um, and obviously, Constellations, as you guys can tell, it, she's C1, and... Um, I have her triple crowned. I can't get her any stronger unless future content releases like a new weapon or maybe a new artifact set that comes out that's much better suited towards DPS Shen her. But physical damage as an actual damage type in Genshin Impact is starting to die off. Ever since Eula came out, really, it just it kind of started to die out after that, really. So, uh, yeah. But now we'll move on to Lisa and we'll move on to Lisa because actually, no, I'm going to leave Lisa till last. We're going to leave Lisa till last because she's uh, she requires a lot. Of, she has a lot of things that I would like to go over with you guys. Now we have Zhongli, obviously. My Zhongli stats aren't amazing. Obviously, my max HP is... Why is it so low? Did I... Oh my god, I tested out the new team composition. I didn't even think to put his artifacts back on. No wonder his things were so low. Yeah. Um, I decided to try and uh, use Diona as a replacement for Zhongli. And... Uh, it's just diminishing returns, really. Use that, and then where's the timepiece? There it is. Right, now if we go back to the stats page, there we go. 44,000 max HP. Now, you might be thinking, 44,000 max HP is not bad on him, but why so low? Shouldn't it be, like, around 50,000 or something like that? And yes, you're right, remember. but the thing is, is I'm using but where the Favonius Lance on him. Now, why am I using the Favonius Lance on him? Uh, because why not? Because why not? Well, at the time, obviously, I do actually have the Black Tassel, and I could put the Black Tassel on him right now if I wanted to, but, uh, I ain't about that life. So, um, now you might be, no, I, I definitely could do it, but I really like Favonius Lance on Zhongli. Um, I feel as though with, um, the Black Tassel, I don't know why, but, like, I feel as though the Black Tassel, it just, how do I say this? Um... Zhongli's energy particle generation isn't really amazing, right? It's not brilliant. And as we all know, Zhongli's probably one of the worst when it comes to creating energy particles. So that's why I decided, well, because I have Yoon Jin, I could use the Favonius Lance on Yoon Jin. She can make even more particles. But for me personally, I would rather have a sort of like more sources of particle generation rather than one consistent source that gives me a load of particles. So I, I prefer the diversity rather than the actual consistency, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and as for the actual artifact set I'm running, obviously Tenacity the Millilith, because it, it's literally brilliant on Zhongli. It's his best in slot set. Number one, it basically, whenever Zhongli's um, actual pillar hits an enemy, uh, an opponent, basically, it will basically trigger the effect. And the effect is... All, like, basically everyone in your party gets 30% increased shield strength and 
20% increased attack percent for three seconds. And it can be re-triggered every 0.5 seconds. Now, Zhongli's um, pillar pulses every 1.5 or 2 seconds. So he can consistently keep this going off. Obviously, you need to play around the pillar. But believe it or not, playing around the pillar for Zhongli is actually not too difficult. At least in my opinion. I usually play around the pillar in most of my actual uh, showcases and stuff. So playing around the pillar is not really too difficult to do on Zhongli. Now, I, I have Zhongli C0 and his talents are triple crown. Now, you guys won't know this, but before... I actually, before this channel actually even, well, took off with around 100, 100 subscribers, this was before I actually started doing Genshin Impact content. But back in the day, I actually used to be a Zhongli main. Yeah, Zhongli was actually my first ever proper DPS. So, um, yeah, he took me very, very far into the game until I decided to uh, get Raiden Shogun and use her as my main DPS, which was probably one of the biggest mistakes in my entire life. I would not recommend it. I hated Raiden Shogun DPS. Um, I wasn't really a huge fan of it. I completely just hated it and hated myself for ever doing that. And if there's one character in the game that I could get rid of right now, it'd be Raiden Shogun. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously not for purposes. She's a brilliant support. I know that because I've seen people on YouTube doing it. I've tried it out myself a few times. And honestly, Raiden Shogun support is brilliant. But I used her as a DPS, and that's where my mistake was. Obviously, maybe it was because I didn't build her correctly. Maybe it was because I just didn't like her playstyle. I just felt really clunky when using Raiden Shogun DPS. I didn't like it at all. So, um, yeah. Uh, but basically, if there, if I didn't pull for Raiden Shogun, I probably would have used him all the way until I got Shen He. And I did. Uh, well, obviously. Uh, Zhongli's been in my team for ever since I got him. And if you guys didn't know, I actually got Zhongli way back in the day, back in patch 1.1, when his first banner ever came out, I got him then. And, well, I've been using him. He's been in my team ever since. And the one drawback I will say of using Zhongli in your team is you get lazy. The game turns a little bit too easy because there's no real mechanics to playing with Zhongli on your team. You just stand there, eat all the damage, and just do damage back. So... It's a little bit of a lazy gameplay, and obviously I've kind of forgotten how to dodge now, which is the one drawback to him, because it's a not really engaging gameplay. But do I hate it? Definitely not. In fact, I feel like a god when I when I have Zhongli on my team, because I can just stand there and eat all the damage possible, not care, and still dish damage out. And I never really hated that feeling. I've always loved it. Of course, it's kind of... It, Zhongli's become a bit of a crutch for me now, but I don't hate that fact. I definitely don't. I love it, in fact. I love just standing there and taking all the damage, watching everyone trying to, you know, deal damage to me, even tickle me and failing every time. It's... 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 It's, 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 it's very funny. It's very funny. It's very hilarious. So, yeah. But um, the main... Another reason why Zhongli is so good, guys, is because back in patch 1.3, for those of you veteran players that actually knew uh, about uh, Zhongli's rework, is that Zhongli actually got, like, a mini rework done to his kit. So... They effectively changed his second passive and they made everything start to scale with 1.39% of his max HP, right? Yeah, and uh, they actually gave him another passive where on his shield, that's right, his shield has it. Yeah, so where is it? The important bit of the... There it is, yeah. The Jade Shield. So it possesses 150% damage absorption against elemental and physical damage. So they changed that for all Geo character Geo units with a shield. So Noel and Zhongli being the only two ones. Right? Ningguang Shield doesn't really count because it only blocks projectiles. But, um, yeah... Now, characters protected by the Jade Shield will decrease the elemental resistance and physical resistance of opponents in a small AoE by 20%. And trust me, the small AoE is actually not that small. It's actually fairly huge. It's like, it's like the radius of Lisa's burst, but a little bit bigger, basically. So it's actually pretty big. Yeah. By physical, like, so you reduce physical resistance by 20%. 20% of opponent's physical resistance just gone, basically. You just eat through that, effectively. So... He's very good in physical teams, and he's also really good in elemental teams because of the elemental resistance. He's effectively like a mini superconduct and a mini, uh, sorry, a mini superconduct and a mini viridescent veneer, right? Yeah, and the best part is, is you can pair him with superconduct and you can pair him with viridescent veneer users, and it would be pretty good for the actual main DPS. Obviously, Geo and Animo don't really mix, but Zhongli and viridescent veneer do mix. 
So, yeah, they work very, very well together. So that's another reason why I use Zhongli. So Zhongli gives me Tenacity of the Millilith, and he also gives me the 20% Physical Resistance Shred, right? That's the main reason I use him, and his shield is obviously undying. Now, we'll move on to Yunjin. Now, Yunjin, as you guys know, is a recent unit that came out way back in patch 2.4, with Shen He's banner, actually. So, uh, yeah, I got Yunjin through Shen He's banner, and uh, I haven't regretted getting her, because I've been using her since I actually ever got her in Shen He's team. So, yeah, I've been using this team, actually, since 2.4. Wow, that's a really long time, actually. Basically, a full year I've been using uh, this team for Shen He. So, um, yeah... Now, as for what weapon I use on Yunjin, obviously, Yun there isn't actually a weapon in the game that, uh, weapon, like, a polearm in the game that gives you defense percent apart from the deathmatch, but the deathmatch gives you a 16% defense boost, which is actually a, a, de a sizable increase. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a load, but I wouldn't say it's, like, a minuscule amount either. It's a, it's a fairly decent increase, but obviously, there's two main problems with that weapon. Number one, it's you have to buy the battle pass in order to get it, right? And obviously, I'm free to play, so I obviously don't have my hands on the deathmatch. I've never spent money in the game, and I don't think I ever will at any point in the near future. Maybe in the far future, but uh, as of right now, I don't see myself spending any money on the game. So I don't have the deathmatch. And of course, you also need to get to uh, battle pass level um, 30 in order to actually choose which weapon you want. So, uh, yeah. And, of course, you need to buy the Battle Pass five times if you want to get refinement ranks for the actual uh, weapon passive to increase. Because that 16% will go up to, like, what, 48% or 32% or something like that, I think. Yeah. Um... 48% would be a, a little bit ridiculous, but um, yeah, and of course, that's the first problem, the fact that you actually have to uh, buy the battle pass in order to get it, number one, and number two is that you only get the defense boost if you're against two or more enemies, if you're against one opponent only, you only get the attack percent boost, you only get that, and the attack percent boost is, slight, is increased by a slight amount, by 8%, so this, the death match is a very situational weapon, right, it's very situational, because you need to be fighting a horde of enemies. So in, in an actual, in, in like Spiral Abyss and some higher floors when you're only going against one opponent. And in, um, in like boss fight scenarios, Yunjin won't get that extra defense. Which obviously is hardly ever going to happen, right? You don't really fight a load of bosses, especially when you're at endgame point now. You're not really farming for a load of characters. But I'm just saying that those kind of situations might actually occur in story missions and stuff like that. So yeah, now... The weapon I'm using on Yunjin is obviously, it's, it's very strange, it's very, very strange, um, because no one else actually runs this weapon. Now, I'm using the Katane Cross Spear, and I know what you're thinking. You might be like, why on earth is he using the Katane Cross Spear? It's an elemental mastery weapon. It doesn't work well with Geo Geocarries because it's elemental mastery, and yeah, you're definitely right, it doesn't. But the only reason I'm actually using it is because, number one, it increases... Well, the only reason I'm actually using it is the elemental skill damage has increased by 6%. That's why I haven't actually increased the refinement ranks. But the best part about this is that Yunjin can passively regenerate energy over time because of the actual effect. It grants you... You lose three energy, but you regain three energy every um, two seconds for the next six seconds. So you gain nine energy after losing three, right? Which means if I use Yunjin's skill... Right, because I'm not actually going to be on Yunjin a lot of the time. My plan is to effectively use Yunjin's um, counter and then switch off and then just stay on Shen He for a long time, gain particles, and then use you go back, switch back to Yunjin to use her elemental skill again. Right, so I'm not on Yunjin a hell of a lot, and Yunjin's energy generation is actually pretty good. She ha she's one of the better units in the actual game. Uh, I mean, in the actual game for Geo units, I mean, to create um, particles. So, yeah, that's why Yunjin is actually quite good. Not necessarily into Geo teams, but as a Geo battery, she's actually pretty decent. And I want to spread my resources of energy generation. So, I could obviously just put the Favonius Lance on Yunjin, right? But I want to use it on Zhongli as well, so I have more um, sources of actual energy particle generation. So, that's effectively why I use the Katane Cross Spear on Yunjin. And I don't really have another option I can use. Oh, I don't really have another option to use, you see, I can't exa- I mean, eh, eh, you see, you see what I mean, like, there's not really a load of options that you can actually use, so, there isn't, if there's a defense percent polearm that comes out in the game, in the near future, then, 
I'll definitely be getting that for Shen, uh, Shen her, Yoon Jin, I mean, and slapping it on her. Because Yoon Jin, already at this stage of the game, she has about 2,363 defense. And that's not even taking into account any of the weapon buffs or, like, you know, the artifact buffs and stuff. Speaking of which, I'm running the full four-piece Husk of Oculent Dreams because it is her best in slot because it gives her increased defense. Now, if you guys didn't know, Yoon Jin's ultimate actually scales with defense, at least the buff that it gives. That's why defense percent is best on Yoon Jin. Yeah. Now, the four-piece basically grants her even more... Like, you, gr you basically gain stacks when you're off-field. And uh, at max stacks, which is four, you'll gain 6% Geo Damage bonus and 6%... Uh, 20, no, sorry, 24% uh, Geo damage bonus and 24% increase in defense. So when I have the max four stacks, I gain a load more defense. In fact, I think I have I have actually got max stacks right now, which is why it's showing that. But um, yeah, you guys can see that I went completely into defense. Like I got flat defense there. I got a lot of defense percent here. I got a uh, defense main stat here and a load of HP and flat defense. I got... Um, defense percent here and i have defense percent here as well which is a pretty decent feather to be honest but uh, yeah i just fully went into just you know pure defense percent on her then obviously another buff that yunjin is giving me is uh, the her c2 which is arguably her one of her best constellations um so basically after using her ultimate all nearby party members normal basically everyone in your party will get their normal attack damage buffed by another 15 percent on top of the buff that her actual elemental skill is giving her now her elemental skill at talent level eight is 51 percent out of uh, 51 percent of her defense in fact that's one of the only reasons why i actually took um yoon jin up to level 80 now normally i would leave her at level 60 out of 70 right but i decided to take her higher because i wanted more from the actual um from her actual buff so the defense, um, the flat defense would go up, and I could also get her talent level up as well. So that's why I took her up to level 8. In fact, I'm also thinking about crowning Yoonjin as well, because how of, of how useful her buff is going to be. Another good passive of hers is actually this one. So basically, depending on the actual, um, depending on the number of elements on your uh, party, right, Yoonjin will gain 2.5 all the way up to 11.5 um, increased uh, scaling on her ultimate now yunjin's defense won't go up but the scaling that her ultimates uh gives you will go up basically so right now my yunjin is giving me 7.5 percent increased uh scaling on her actual burst at 51 percent. so 51 percent plus 7.5 that's 58.5 percent of her defense that's basically being given extra to um you know my shen her as a normal attacker so yeah if i wanted to i can make yoon jin much stronger in fact her constellations her c3 just increases the level of her actual burst and that's good because that means more defense uh, higher defense ratio for her burst and her c4 is basically whenever yoon jin triggers triggers a crystallized reaction her defense will be increased by 20 percent for 12 seconds so if you use yoon jin's um elemental skill and it hits someone with an element all you need to do is trigger a crystallized reaction that's all you need to do you don't need to pick up the shard or anything just trigger the reaction and then use yoon jin's elemental burst straight away and you'll get even more defense meaning even more defense uh ratio right and that means that your normal attack is going to be hitting even harder so c4 yoon jin would be a huge stop really good stopping point although c6 basically makes it so that everyone under the effects of her ultimate deal uh their normal attacks are increased by 12 percent, which is also really good but yeah just to sum everything up um Yoon Jin is giving me Husk of Oculent... Well, Husk of Oculent Dreams doesn't do much for my party, but her ultimate alone is really all I need because of how crazy her ultimate buff actually is. So, yeah. Also, let's not forget that th these two in my party does give me the Geo Resonance, right? And the Geo Resonance, if you didn't know, is basically when you have a shield on you, all of your damage dealt is going to be increased by 15%. Your damage dealt is increased by 15%, which is actually quite a decent amount because that takes into account every type of source of damage. So any uh, reaction damage, crit damage, it adds all of that up plus the 15% on top of that. So that's really, really good, right? Yeah, and let's not forget that the Geo Resonance also has, uh, what is it, opponents that are, what is it, 
opponents that are affected by geo take 20% less geo uh, have 20% less geo resonance or something a uh, geo resistance i should say or something like that and now we'll get onto the most important unit in the entire party now lisa i've only taken her up to level 60 out of 70 because all of her sources are coming from passive actual just just passives <sighs> right because her talents literally don't make her stronger at all for my build anyway for my purposes it's all just coming from the things that is on her that that are on her so the first buff she's providing is number one she's electro and obviously shen has cryo superconduct superconduct basically makes it so that my um physical damage all opponents have 50 uh, four, sorry 40 percent physical uh, resistance shredded right plus zhongli's actual passive shield right with 20 percent, that means 60 percent reduction in physical resistance that's a lot 40 percent is already a lot 20 percent is already a lot 40 percent plus 20 percent is 60 percent i'm basically cutting their physical resistance down by two thirds <sighs> effectively nearly two thirds nearly right Think about, think about that for a second. That's a lot, right? That's her first buff. The fact that she's Electro. Simply by existing as an Electro character, she's already threatening enough. Now, number two is I'm using Thrilling Tales, the Dragon Slayers on her. And this is where a lot of people will start questioning these methods. They'll be like, what is this madman doing? Thrilling Tales on Lisa. Does he have a death wish? And... I don't have a death wish. I still have many things I would like to accomplish in life. All right. So I don't have a death wish. But you guys know if you are veterans of the game or even now newer players, you guys will know that if you've been playing way back in the day, one of the reasons why Barbara was such a broken unit back then or really strong back then was because of this weapon. And it's not necessarily the actual stats that it gives you. Obviously, it gives you HP and base attack, but the the actual power of this weapon lies in the actual passive when switching characters the new character taking the field has their attack increased by 48 percent for 10 seconds and this is at r5 right this effect can only occur once every 20 seconds now it has a 10 second downtime right so that is the one drawback to this but the thing is is for 10 seconds i have nearly half of my attack percent uh, half of my attack boosted up so basically, my Shenhe will go from 2,200 attack to 3,330 attack, or a little bit less because it's 48%. But that's the bonus that I'm going to get. Half of my attack just getting increased. Increased on top of my original attack, right? So the fact that Lisa has access to a weapon like this is already pretty bonkers on top of the fact that she's Electro, right? Because now she's not only reducing the opponent's physical resistance, but she's also buffing my Shen He. And of course, the rotation, it means that I have to use Lisa last in my entire rotation. But that's not a problem for me, because I can consistently do that nowadays. Of course, before it was a bit of a struggle, but now that I've gotten used to my team, I know what my rotations need to be. So there we go. Number two. That's the second buff that she gives me. The first one being Electro, the debuffing of enemies. The second one, the fact that she has access to Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers. Number two. Now the third one is I am running the completely wrong set once again. Hold on, guys. Um, right. Camera is still rolling. Don't worry. But I'm going to be using... Yeah, I'll use this one. Uh, that's the one I originally had on her, actually. Um, and then this one as well. Yes. Uh, energy recharge, that stayed the same. Electro damage bonus, that stayed the same. And crit rate, that's also stayed the same. Right. So, now that I'm running the actual correct set on her... Um, yes, I'm running Noblesse Oblige. Now, Noblesse Oblige on Lisa's not necessarily a bad thing. If anything, it's actually quite good because it pairs with her kit quite well uh, as a burst support. But... A lot of Lisa mains and Lisa support character users out there obviously will say this is this is pretty good on her, but it's not the best. But the reason I use it is because of the four piece, right? Because I don't actually have an Ablesser Bleed user on my team. And I want an Ablesser Bleed user on my team because it pairs really well with Tenacity of the Millileth. Because Tenacity of the Millileth can't stack on itself. And Ablesser Bleed can't stack on itself. But Ablesser Bleed and Tenacity of the Millileth 
can stack on each other. So, Noblesse Oblige, basically the way it works is, after you use your burst, right, everyone in your party will gain 20% increased attack for the next 12 seconds, right? So 20% from Noblesse Oblige, plus 20% from the from Tenacity of the Millilith through Zhongli. That's 40%, right? Provided I can consistently get it off. Plus the 48% coming from Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers. That's an 88% boost in attack for my Shen He. Right? Which means I will be nearing, nearing 5,000 attack on Shen He if I get the full rotation off. Obviously, it won't be fully 5,000. It definitely won't be. Right? Um, so, it definitely won't be. But I'm saying that... Actually, no. Even if I calculate... You know, what I said before is I won't be reaching 5,000 attack, but I'm going to be hitting near 4,000. That's what I meant. 4,000. Right? I'll be getting close to around 4,000 attack. Maybe even going over a little bit. No, I, actually, I won't be. I'll be going... I'll be still be staying under. But near 3,700, 3,800 is the region I'm going to be hitting in with all these buffs. With everything up, everything active. Right? And already, you can see how ridiculous I've made Lisa to actually work with this team. She's giving me 20% attack buff through Noblesse Oblige, another 48% through, you know, Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer. So that's 68% total. And then she's reducing opponent's physical resistance by 40%. That, that's three buffs she's giving me right now. Noblesse Oblige, Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers, and her just being Electro. And there's one more. Yep, that's right, I'm not done. There's one more. Probably the biggest one out of all of them. Right? Maybe, well, maybe not the biggest, but the second biggest, I mean. And no, it's not her constellations, even though I do have C1. None of her constellations really improve her support capabilities. Apart from maybe her C4. Yeah, her C4 will basically increase the amount of times her... Um, her uh, ultimate actually uh, lamps actually creates because her lamp only creates like one uh, like violet arc, right? A violet arc is that? Is that one? Lightning rose. There we go. The lightning bolt that lightning rose releases is about one, but it will go from one to three with C four, which is very good because obviously it means I can apply superconduct more. But I'm not really, you know. Lisa's uh, electro application is already really amazing because she's a catalyst user. She has those skills, right? Now, of course, you can see here I've leveled up her talents up to level six after realizing that they were basically nigh on useless because all of Lisa's buffs that she's giving my team right now is passive. I cannot do anything more to make Lisa stronger. This is as strong as she's, can go as she's going to get. Unless, obviously, another weapon like Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers comes out in the future. Or another set like Noblesse Oblige comes out in the future. Right? I can't do anything to make her stronger. Because I can't upgrade her kit. Her actual kit, I can't upgrade in order to make her stronger. But this... This passive is the reason why I decided to go for her in the first place. Now, Static Electricity Field. Opponents hit by Lightning Rose, her ultimate have their defense decreased by 15% for 10 seconds. So now, on top of the fact that she's giving me about 68% attack through Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers and Noblesse Oblige, as well as the fact that she's reducing opponent's physical resistance by 40%, she's now also going to be reducing their defense by another 15%. Now, defense... And physical, and physical resistance shred is completely different, right? Defense is going to be reducing the damage that opponents can tank or take, basically. So their defense capabilities is going to decrease along with physical resistance. Because physical resistance isn't the full picture, right? Obviously, physical resistance reduces the amount of damage that opponents can take through physical damage, right? But their defense is still there to counteract the fact that they're taking a load of damage. It, defense is an overall stat that determines how good a unit can take damage, right, and mitigate it. But if you reduce that defense, 
all forms of resistance is also going to be multiplied with the defense resistance shred because of the fact that, you know, they don't have enough innate original, like, the, they don't have the foundation to take that damage, basically. So, obviously, if you don't have a good foundation, the floors and the structures and pylons on top will also crumble. Reducing the foundation is the best way to making something weaker, to decrease the debuffs, oh, sorry, to increase the debuffs of something, right? That's why attacking the foundation is always the best, and that's why Lisa is arguably one of the best units that this game can provide, because of the fact that she can use four, four separate buffs, or four separate sources of buffs, well, two separate sources of buffs, and two separate sources of debuffs. She's not only diverse, right, but she also provides things that every physical damage unit wants, right? That's why Eula could be very, very strong paired with Lisa, right? But obviously Lisa's a starter unit. No one really talks about her these days because a starter unit's kit just isn't really amazing. And obviously Mihoyo made it so, but... If you build Lisa the right way, like this, as a buffer slash debuffer unit... She can provide a lot of value. That's why you, when you guys... In fact, even in the last Shenha video that I made, right? When I came back, right? That's why you saw my numbers hitting absurd values all the time because of Lisa. Now, of course, I may have given away my biggest secret. Maybe even, you know, my biggest secrets to how I can achieve so much damage with Shenha. But you guys can now see why Lisa is a key member to this build. Because she's arguably one of the most perfectly built electro units in the game because of the amount of buffs she can actually provide of course for an elemental team lisa's still pretty good but obviously you won't have superconduct in an ele elemental damage team but still lisa's probably one of the best buffing units that mihoyo never meant never intended to make right so you guys can see how passionate I was about this video. I was I was stressing a lot of things. I was making sure you guys got the point and stuff like that. So I do apologize if my tone was a little bit more like, you guys need to build this. I'm not, I don't want to be that kind of person, you know, you guys need to build this because I say so. And I'm just saying uh, the reason I built my team around Li Shen He this way is because everything that this team, I, that, that I wanted is in this team. The only thing I'm missing is a healer. But who needs a healer when... You have Zhongli. Who needs that healer when he can just take everything and you and allows you to just dish everything back? So yeah, I do apologize, guys, if the team builds were if the if the builds for the characters are a little bit triggering, especially the Lisa one. Because this is definitely a very, very odd way to build Lisa. It really is. As a buffer slash debuffer. You always build her as an electro support unit. You never build her as a debuffer or a buffer, but the thing is, is Lisa's probably one of the best friend. She's probably one of the best friends that anyone can ever have in real life, number one. And as a Genshin Impact character's best friend for physical units, right? If you want to build an amazing physical damage unit, Lisa is one of the best options you have because of the fact that she gives you four sources of buffing power. Two of which are genuine buffs, and two of which are debuffs towards enemies. And what can I say? Lisa's just built different. She's manufactured different. She really is. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, guys, that's basically been the video. Oh, right. Also, before I do forget one more thing, um, Shenhe has a very nice talent that actually also boosts her own physical DPS, and that's this one. So after Shenhe uses her elemental skill, which is Spring Spirit Summoning, she'll grant all nearby party members the following effects. This includes herself, by the way. Shenhe also receives these effects. So tap the elemental skill and elemental burst damage is increased by 15% for 10 seconds, which is whatever, really. That's actually quite good for support Shenhe, but not for DPS Shenhe. The hold variation is where the damage is at. The hold variation, normal charge and plunging attack damage is increased by 15% for 15 seconds. So she can buff herself, her physical self, and her cryo self, right? So I hope you guys 
have enjoyed this video. Of course, it was a little bit different because I don't really do a load of character build guides these days. Obviously, I used to, but I don't really uh, do character build guides these days because, uh, obviously, I don't have a load of characters to really show off, especially newer characters. I haven't really pulled on the on the banners ever. I haven't actually pulled on a banner ever since Shen He's banner. So I don't really have a load of the newer units or anything like that. But, um, yeah... This is the story of how I crafted the best team for Shen He. And this is why you guys can see the absurd numbers of damage that I'm doing on my, on my Shen He videos. Because of how ridiculous the build is that I've made for Shen He. Anyway guys, that's basically been the video. I've dragged it on for way too long. And now, maybe this video has definitely helped you guys to think more about the little intricate details when it comes to building characters. This is effectively the definition of min-maxing. Making your team or your DPS stronger through your support units. Making them stronger no matter what sacrifices you need to make. Or even resorting to absurd ways to make her stronger. If there is a way that you think I can make my team even better, do let me know in the comment section below. But until then, I have been Carvinus14, and still am. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you all very, very soon. Goodbye.